to help us witness this occasion, uh, we have Dr. Neil Tyson, who's director of the Haydn Planetarium. Uh, he is an astrophysicist. Uh, he has just gone through the process of building a building somewhat bigger than ours. Uh, and um, I would like to ask him to, to share a few words with us. The presence of science in the media seems to be growing. A week doesn't go by where you don't see some kind of feature article on something discovered about the human genome, some result coming back from the Hubble Space Telescope, or some new particle discovered. And I think this is a genuine change in how the public is thinking about science in our society. I see the public no longer thinking of themselves as bystanders looking over the wall at scientists in lab coats getting their research done. I see this change having turned the public into sort of vicarious participants in the scientific enterprise, where we see science as not something that other people do, but something that belongs to us all. And as it goes, it'll take the faculty, the students, and the rest of the campus, who even though they may not specialize in science, they will see themselves as also as participants in this voyage. And it's the most beautiful voyage there is, the voyage to discover the secrets of the universe. I want to congratulate Guilford College uh, and publicly recognize the role of philanthropy in moving forward this nation, our brain trust invested in the next generation of those who will lead us. Thank you. You know, I look around society and I see, I see the public becoming more and more interested in science but not having the tools to actually understand it. And so here at Guilford, to be a part of a celebration where there's a center devoted to the study of science and to the training of the next generation of scientists, are, or even if there are students here who take science courses and don't become scientists, no matter what else they do, they'll be scientifically literate. And this is an important... Uh, part of this sort of turning wheel of getting people to understand science, to appreciate it, to learn about it, and the philanthropy that can continue to make it happen. It's interesting because often people think of buildings only as a place where things happen, but buildings have a deeper significance to that. They can almost take on a mythical meaning unto themselves. For example, if you're a new student and you walk onto this campus, you will see that there's this place where science happens. It says science on the side of the building. So your, your mindset, your landscape of expectations becomes shaped by the fact that there's a place where science happens, a whole floor of biology, a floor of physics, a floor of geology. And that, as a reminder, I think is important because you are told, passive, you are passively told, just by walking past the building, that science happens here, and that science is valued here, and that science education matters in modern society, it matters at Guilford. I think the solution is not that you go around beating people over the head saying, oh no, this is, has no foundation. The solution is you go earlier in the educational track and you teach people how to think. You teach people how to evaluate evidence. You teach people how to receive information and process it in their mind. And in that way, they're armed to handle the charlatan that approaches them. Because they can say, wait a minute, why do you think that's so? What I've read doesn't match that. I have this sense of how the world works, and what you're saying violates seven laws of physics. So I would promote that in campuses and classes, even in high schools, forego one of the courses that have been offered for 100 years and stick in a course on critical thinking and how to evaluate evidence. That'll be far more valuable for the rest of your life than anything else you'll end up taking.